praise the lord i want to share with us from the word of god a very important subject uh, that i want us to consider as christians and contemplate upon especially at this time in the history of our world so the subject i want us to look into is the one that concerns the return of our Lord Jesus Christ because as the church of our Lord Jesus Christ we are in a time of history that is uh, very unique in the Christendom and therefore it is now necessary that we as children of God understand the teachings of the Bible Praise the Lord. So I really believe that uh, we're in a time that uh, the Word of God is so important and it's become necessary that we look into the teachings of the Bible. So I have a topic that I want us to consider and that is Harpazo and Apolutrosis. Harpazo and apolutrosis. Now, when you read the Bible, uh, there are events uh, that will happen in the future of the world and that the Bible uh, predicted. So, harpazo is a Greek word for presumably the rapture of the church, and apolutrosis alludes uh, to that same event and from the context of the verse that we shall be looking into so in the future of the world there is an event that is uh, predicted in the bible that is going to happen to our world and so that event will would require that uh, the process of harpazo which is the rapture of the church or cause and so the event is the rapture of the church and the bible told us things that will that will happen and that will lead to this uh, event which is one of the greatest event in the future of the christian of christendom and in the future of christianity so there are many people that do not believe in jesus christ and I am sharing this uh, message and whoever that will see this message to uh, tell us about something that is going to happen in the future of the world. Praise the Lord. So I want us to look into uh, the Bible and consider some of the tests that we have here praise God so we are looking at first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to uh, 18 and we will really consider 17 and because that's where the harpazo uh, comes in and we will look into a polythrosis and and what that is praise God so first uh, Thessalonians chapter chapter 4 and I'll read I will read it in a moment hallelujah praise the lord now uh, I am not here yet. Praise God. Now, First Thessalonians chapter four, verse. Uh, I will start from verse thirteen, because we are looking into this great event that concerns the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, because uh, there are certain things that will begin to happen, and based on these occurrences, our Lord Jesus Christ will return to take His church to heaven. And for our Christians, we really believe that. And these things are going to happen according to the Bible. 
Now we have this uh, First Thessalonians chapter four, starting from thirteen. Now here the Bible says, "But do not, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope." Now Apostle Paul is talking, uh, encouraging the Thessalonian church here, and telling them, "Do not be ignorant." concerning the brothers or sisters the brethren that have died he used the word folly asleep to refer to those that have died do not weep as though you have no hope so he's bringing a word here hope very important so the the man of god is encouraging the people the man of god is making an argument here and trying to dissuade the church from excessive grief or inordinate sorrow is trying to dissuade the church from excessive inordinate sorrows so he's telling them do not be ignorant so he's introducing something that is important and that is knowledge he's telling them don't be ignorant because you have to have knowledge in this area because there are many people that are ignorant they are ignorant in the sense that they do not know uh, the activities that the Bible have uh, predicted that will happen to the world. So they are ignorant of these things and so they weep when they have a fellow that died. So the man of God is saying you do not need to weep. There is a hope of eternal life. That means those Christians that died, you will see them somewhere. And that is a beautiful thing. You will see them in a glorified body. That's what the Bible says. In a resurrected body. So that means, even though those people that have died now, you know, fellow Christians, those that have suffered persecutions all around the world and died, the Bible says a time is coming that they will, their bodies will be resurrected because of the process of heart puzzle and apolytherosis that we'll uh, quickly uh, look into here. So the man of God is introducing the concept of trying to dissuade the people from inordinate sorrows and excessive grief. And by telling them, do not be ignorant. So when you undergo such inordinate sorrows and excessive grief, you are exhibiting ignorance in this area because that means you do not know that there is a life after he. So the idea of this is that there is a life after he. And that is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why we are preaching the gospel. There are many people that do not know that there is a life after this cosmic, cosmic, uh, cosmic program. There is a life after this entire cosmic uh, cosmic program that we are part of after this after our life